Hello guys and welcome back uh, to this uh, tutorial. Uh, it looks like uh, in the last uh, video, the full deployment and program only deployment uh, uh, audio was not working or audio was not visible to you guys. Although I tried to uh, uh, talk about uh, full deployment and uh, program only deployment in detail. However, I'll, I'll still uh, <clears throat> get through that, uh, those uh, uh, steps. So let me start with the full deployment here. Um, in the full deployment, uh, what you see is uh, um, what what you get when you are doing a full deployment of SaaS via platform uh, environment. So here in this uh, 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 here in this architecture or here in this uh, picture, you can see um, what are the components, how uh, the infrastructure will look like, how. Um, the platform will talk to different uh, uh, systems, etc. We'll talk about. Um, so in this, uh, in this has uh, uh, via space, uh, you see uh, the programming runtime environment, SaaS cloud analytics server, and service layer. Uh, what it what it does mean is, um, in the programming runtime environment, you have the compute. Uh, Server, LAN server, connect server, and connect spawners, which are used to, uh, uh, which is which are used to run in the background when a when a, um, a program is run from a from any uh, desktop or web clients, and uh, in the cloud analytics servers, as cloud analytics server, CAS server, which is I think what um, you can have a single machine or an analytical cluster depending on the requirements of your organization. Whereas single mission will only contain one CAS controller and a SAS connect data connectors um, and then the required uh, software. Whereas in the analytical cluster, you will have uh, um, uh, multiple CAS controllers, CAS controller one, secondary controller, workers, etc. And then um, accordingly, the components associated with the each controller, CAS controller. So this one will act as a load balancer for you and, uh, and will enable the uh, uh, Availability for your uh, organizations as via platform. So the SaaS analytical clusters are mainly supported um, only on the Linux environment. So you have to make a note of that. And um, and uh, when when uh, you are installing it on a single machine, you can use either a Linux or a Windows uh, server. Um, when we move to service layer, uh, you have these web applications, right? SaaS Visual Analytics, SaaS Environment Manager, SaaS Studio. Uh, 5.x, SaaS theme designer, etc. All these web, uh, web applications that are required for the web uh, clients to uh, work on it. And then you have um, microservices, which are uh, credentials uh, to compute, folder, log on, monitoring, uh, SaaS app studios, etc., which are required for your service to run as it should. And then the infrastructure services like um, uh, cache, locator, configuration server, sub secrets manager message broker etc are installed or set up during the deployment phase so this these are the components that are required uh, for saas um, uh, web platform and when it comes to uh, data warehouse and um, and then the connectivity or how the data will flow from uh, uh, data database uh, to saas web platform is like rdbms right we have rdbms uh, how do data storage and then rdbms we have several serial and parallel uh, um, uh, services, SPD, engine, Teradata, etc. And then when this serial only DB2, HANA, JDBS, JDBC, MySQL, ODBC, etc. are installed or are enabled for uh, you to connect to different uh, types of these data sources. As well as uh, we have a Hadoop data store as well, which is uh, required for Hadoop data to uh, move. And then you also have this legacy SaaS systems, like when, when you have a environment where uh, you are moving from 9x version to SaaS uh, via 3.x uh, version, then uh, you want to move some data from the 9x version of uh, the platform to SaaS uh, platform, then uh, you use these uh, SaaS Connect, SaaS LAX analytical server, etc. And then it also supports uh, different types of SaaS file systems, um, SaaS uh, HDAC, JMP, SAS 7 bd data, etc. And then other open file system file types like uh, CSV, XLS, document, image, video, parquet, um, and ORC as uh, discussed earlier. Um, and all the web clients, uh, mobile client clients, etc. are used for the users to connect to the platform and operate. 
right? This is how the full deployment will work, look like. And when it comes to um, uh, program only deployment, uh, the only difference that you see from uh, full deployment to program only deployment is you will not have a, um, full microservice, full uh, service layer, whereas uh, uh, applications, uh, microservices, uh, and infrastructure components are such are, are uh, limited to program uh, only interface. Um, like uh, you have this embedded web application server called SaaS Studio, uh, which is used for uh, web applications, and uh, you have these uh, um, uh, SaaS workspace server, connect server, and object spawner for your programs to run in the background. And then in the infrastructure layer, you have only the Apache HTTP server for your uh, um, uh, web applications to talk. Rest all services uh, will look as it is from the full uh, deployment to uh, partial or a program only deployment. Right. Um, uh, you also have some clients to uh, into the platform. So, this is how uh, the difference between a full deployment and a programming only deployment will look like. And in the next slide, uh, I'm going to talk about SaaS products and supporting components. So these are some of the examples that uh, uh, SaaS um, uh, platform uses uh, as uh, the components and product uh, products um, for your organization to use the platform. Um, here are SaaS cloud analytics server, data science, event streaming, uh, studio, uh, uh, enterprise or basic version or text analytics for different uh, uh, purposes. And the supporting components, including the access interfaces to different types of uh, uh, database, uh, data data warehouse uh, components, ODBC files, PC files, PostgreSQL, etc. And then uh, if you have to, if your organization is planning to do some visual analytics, you also have some supporting components like SAS visual analytics, visual data mining, machine learning, SAS visual statistics, etc. as the com supporting components available for you to uh, look. So, uh, so these are the three slides I was planning on covering in the uh, previous uh, uh, slide, uh, this previous video, but then uh, because of some audio issues, uh, that was not available. Sorry for that. So uh, with that, uh, let me move on to uh, the, the deployment part. Right. So in the earlier slides, we were also talking about how the um, uh, SaaS deployment uh, will happen, uh, SaaS via platform deployment will happen. And um, so let's uh, let's uh, look at uh, the first thing, which is system requirements. Right. Um, so let me move on to that slide. So in the system requirements, uh, we mainly look at uh, hardware requirement, uh, different types of operating system requirements, server, uh, software requirement, uh, data sources and storage requirements, user accounts that are required, um, client requirements, and 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 how uh, this is going to help uh, the the uh, installation to happen smoothly. So let's uh, first talk about um, hardware requirement. So when it comes to hardware requirement, these are the high level uh, um, uh, topics um, uh, that we need to we need to uh, uh, see when uh, we are starting the um, the SaaS uh, OI platform installation uh, in, in uh, Windows environment or any Linux environment uh, per se. So let's start with this. Uh, when uh, let me let me quickly. Walk you through this. What are what are these uh, that uh, that we want to um, see? We talked about uh, steps for successful deployment. Okay, so when it comes to uh, hardware uh, in the system requirement when it comes to hardware. So uh, full uh, full deployment is uh, recommended uh, for any configuration or uh, for most of the customer requirements that we see nowadays. So, so to, to deploy um, uh, full um, um, uh, uh, full full and full environment, um, uh, you need to uh, you need to uh, get the full SaaS package from the SaaS uh, Institute and uh, and then do it. So SaaS also strongly recommends uh, um, uh, consulting with their uh, um, technical expertise to un understand about what are the sizes that are required and uh, hardware that is required 
and uh, what is the deployment uh, that, that, that we are going to do that the workload that we are going to happen and the number of users that we are going to uh, uh, set up uh, in the SaaS platform, SaaS via platform. And uh, based on that, uh, uh, they will uh, give a specific uh, 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 prerequisites document and following the prerequisites document, uh, we, we do it. So in the, in the hardware, uh, as I said, uh, when it comes to host, um, we need to use a dedicated host uh, for the SaaS via platform uh, deployment. Um, and uh, the mission target uh, for the deployment must have uh, these following uh, attributes, uh, a static IP address. Uh, after the deployment has completed the change, uh, we can change, change it. We, we cannot change this uh, IP address because this is the IP address that is going to sit in all the configuration files of uh, um, uh, SaaS web platform. And, um, and, and, and sometimes if a fully qualified name is, uh, is, is uh, not used everywhere, can you simply use the IP address to log in? And uh, a static uh, host name that uh, conforms to the internet standard sites that is required after the, again, after this uh, deployment, we cannot change these host names or domain names uh, because that, that again are going to sit in our configuration files. Um, and a uh, uh, fully qualified uh, domain name uh, with uh, uh, that is 64 carats or fewer in length is required. So this restriction is related to the implementation of transport uh, layer security, TLS, that, uh, that you know. Uh, so one of these uh, specifications for the certificate revocation uh, list is a 64 limit um, you know, for the common name uh, attribute, CN. And, um, and uh, the same thing that we are going to use. So similarly, when we move towards uh, CPU and RAM recommendations, uh, we uh, SAS uh, uh, has undergone rigorous performance testing uh, with various hardware combinations. Um, and uh, during this configuration, during this testing, uh, it is recommended that a high performing uh, Intel Xenon E3 E7 series microprocessor uh, is recommended. And uh, SAS uh, via team has uh, um, uh, tested uh, with this new Intel. Uh, uh, Intel chips. Uh, um, uh, uh, we can also use uh, Intel Xenon uh, scalable uh, process, which will help us to uh, uh, do the scalable uh, environment. And then uh, the workload is balanced between this. Uh, SAS uh, via also uh, recommends and supports a 64-bit AMD chipset. 32-bit uh, chipsets are, uh, uh, are not supported. Uh, and 64-bit uh, is the recommendation that we need to use. Um, we also need to consider uh, some of uh, the deployment process, such as the hardware guidelines that are enabled or set up in the prerequisites documents uh, have to be used. Um, uh, if, if you are doing a test environment, a CPU, RAM, uh, and these resources can maybe reduced uh, slightly because uh, your production environment has to be as per the recommendations. But if you are doing a development test environment, you can reduce these uh, numbers uh, accordingly. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, production should be as per the requisites so that uh, the the performance uh, will improve um, uh, when when we're using the adequate response and if you have to increase the performance by uh, by increasing the ram and cpu that also you can uh, do um, also uh, uh, it is recommended that uh, an adequate space at a space of at least 54 50 GB is, uh, is is recommended uh, because uh, if I if I um, by, by if I segregate uh, uh, the architectural concentrations that uh, we saw in the earlier slides, so we have to, we have a SaaS cloud analytical server, we have program runtime environment, we have service layer. So for SaaS uh, cloud, uh, uh, so for SaaS cloud uh, analytic server, we have to have. Uh, uh, um, uh, say CPU, a CPU of uh, minimum uh, four core, um, and the RAM, RAM, RAM of at least uh, one GB, right? Which is uh, which is bare minimum that is required to set up. And for the uh, sorry, let me move to the full deployment. So for the programming runtime, um, uh, we have to have uh, compute uh, servers, as foundations, as studio, as workspace server, everything in it. So the CPU, um, uh, the number of CPUs that are required for the programming end to end depends on your uh, on your specific licenses that we take. Uh, if uh, if your CAS license uh, is for um, is for four cores, 
you your uh, your programming runtime also should be that four four numbers if it is eight if your cash license is for eight cores you have to have eight cores so so however uh, the minimum requirement for uh, having the uh, programming runtime environment is at least uh, two two cores and uh, and uh, sas actually recommends to use or allocate at least four cores of optimal four cores for uh, getting the optimal performance and then the minimum uh, ram space ram um, space required ram ram required for the programming runtime is 4 gb and um, and uh, if you are having if you have to have an optical performance or and then your your uh, jobs and uh, programs should run uh, uh, adequately uh, sas recommends that you allocate at least uh, 16 gb of ram uh, uh, and or or else at least 4 gb of 4 gb of ram for each cpu core that you have licensed for as i said if it is a four um, licensed uh, uh, software you took, then uh, for four sixteen uh, GB of RAM is required. Uh, similarly, for uh, service layer, um, uh, the components uh, required in the full deployment uh, uh, includes uh, the, uh, the processing. So these components are not all usually restricted, and uh, this includes uh, services that are supported by SaaS via analytical processing. So whatever uh, components that you set up here that are used by analytics or programming runtime, so you no need to uh, specifically set up uh, uh, for this. Uh, and then uh, as you can see, there is uh, 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 one more screenshot I have mentioned here. Uh, so for, for if, if your environment is going to have, or, or, or you got a license for, uh, visual analytics components though so these are the comp these are the requirements that we need to set up for each um, uh, each product that we are uh, setting up so visual analytics uh, 48 gb ram four cpu cores uh, similarly if you are having all the components actually it takes visual statistics visual data mining and uh, machine learning 64 gb of ram and at least six cores of cpu right uh, and uh, for example, if you are using the uh, uh, SaaS via platform for deep learning, like SaaS visual data mining and uh, machine learning or components are also going to be there, then uh, SaaS recommends us to use a graphical processing unit, GPU, um, uh, which, is a, which is an additional functionality that you need to enable for uh, uh, for this deep learning. And, uh, and uh, um, you, you are also recommended to use NVIDIA graphics, NVIDIA display drivers, um, for uh, your platform to run appropriately. Um, so with that, uh, let me move to operating uh, system requirements. Um, so as you can see, uh, there are different uh, uh, different uh, operating uh, system that uh, SaaS via platform or SaaS via software supports. So which we, which you can um, uh, deploy uh, using any of these. Uh, operating systems uh, listed here. Uh, end users can also access these product uh, user interface for SaaS by applications from their desktop computers uh, using supported web browsers, right? So end users, it doesn't have any um, um, uh, clue of what is the operating system environment that uh, an administrator or the technical consultant from SaaS set up, but uh, they, they will mainly use uh, a web browser or a desktop computer to Login to SaaS via platform and uh, operate. Um, so, okay. So when when it comes to uh, distribute, uh, uh, as I said, uh, you can see Linux, Windows, and Ansible. So let's first talk about uh, Linux, uh, sixty-four bit, uh, eighty-six version. In a multi-mission deployment, SaaS recommends that all. Uh, server uh, machines have the same version of Linux. So if you are uh, setting up um, uh, workspace server, sorry, compute server, compute machine, um, a cloud analytics server, uh, uh, an operating machines, etc., you you have to use the same uh, either Red Hat Enterprise or Oracle or Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.2, something like that. Uh, all the all the machines, server machines, should be of same version of Linux, right? And uh, and you cannot mix one one uh, Linux version with another Linux version, which is not supported by the SaaS uh, platform, and uh, it tends to fail to operate. So while uh, you are using the Azure, AWS, or GCP platforms, 
you um, uh, deploy all the CAS server machines uh, running on the same version. So, so these are the following the um, uh, operated supported operating systems: Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7.1. Uh, or Oracle Enterprise uh, Linux 7.1, Enterprise version 8.2, uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise Server 12.2 or later. Uh, okay, then uh, then you also have uh, uh, some um, Windows uh, environments. Um, you can use Windows Server uh, uh, 2012, R2 Data Center Essential Foundation, etc., or 2016 or 2019 data centers. So some uh, organizations will also use uh, Ansible, Ansible uh, version. It is important to note that uh, uh, Red Hat uh, and uh, uh, Enterprise uh, Red Hat has restructured the Ansible project and changed uh, the way the, the tools are packaged and downloaded. So you need to make sure whenever you are doing this as a wide deployment, the Ansible versions that are supported are Ansible Community Collection um, 500600 and 700, which in includes Ansible Core 212, 214, etc. Uh, because only these versions um, are supported uh, for SaaS via deployment. And there are some limitations also for uh, installing these uh, different Linux versions. So make sure uh, you read the prerequisite document that is set up by technical consult from SaaS before um, setting up this. Uh, operating system. Okay, uh, let me move on to the next slide for this uh, server components. So, while uh, uh, system require in the system requirements, this is like a server software requirement. Uh, as we discussed uh, um, uh, uh, in the thing uh, in the Linux, when you're doing the Linux, you have to have the Java runtime environment JRE already installed there and Apache HTPD, which should be prerequisitely installed. And uh, when it comes to Windows, you have to have uh, Microsoft Windows PowerShell version 5.1 or later. Uh, which is required such a, which is required to install as well on the Windows machine. So this PowerShell um, is a framework that supports scripting languages and configuration management capabilities on the Windows environment, um, and is also required for running the deployment scripts in Windows PowerShell uh, integrated scripting environment ICS. ISC um, uh, is not supported. So uh, whenever you are doing the uh, PowerShell uh, uh, installations. You first start with the uh, uh, PowerShell uh, uh, thing, and then uh, at the command prompt of PowerShell, you uh, uh, verify the version of the PowerShell. And if you get the uh, in output as major version five um, or or more, then uh, you can do proceed. Otherwise, you have to update the PowerShell version to later major version five, and um, and appropriately, uh, you also have to install the latest version of. Microsoft uh, sorry, Windows Management Framework 5.1, which is required for the uh, for PowerShell to run. Also, you need to have uh, .NET versions 4.6.1, um, which is a requirement of Microsoft Windows Framework. And all these uh, executables, all these installations should happen before uh, we are doing. We start with the uh, installation of uh, uh, SaaS via platform. Also, you need to have uh, uh, Java runtime environment here as well. Uh, a 64 bit version of Java runtime environment uh, should be there on the machine before you start uh, the SaaS via platform components. Um, and then this third party distribution of uh, JRE uh, are supported as long as uh, uh, all the versions are entitled as per the SaaS support website. If they are not in line, you have to make sure all these are updated, up to date, and updated as per the requirements from the JRE uh, uh, from SaaS. Uh, uh requisites document additionally if you require uh, um, if you require a java and oracle java uh, as a additional features you can also install uh, those components so let me move on to data source and uh, storage requirements as as one of the um, uh, deployment requirements um, so why data source and storage requirements are required right here. So you have to install these uh, uh, softwares uh, to enable data retrieval from various uh, data storage storage applications. So depending on your data source, 
requirements that your organization wants to connect and then retrieve the data from. So you have to install one or more uh, of these SaaS access products. So supported data sources, you can see here, uh, SaaS via, by default SaaS, SaaS via supports the, uh, the uh, there are different data sources, PC files, data sources that are accessible with an ODBC driver, Postgres, SQL, Salesforce, Snowflakes, etc. However, if you want to um, um, get uh, uh, different um, uh, data sources that uh, that you need to access, you have to uh, install all these different uh, uh, SaaS access uh, interfaces to uh, these applications. Uh, this can be um, uh, required for either Linux or Windows uh, uh, machines, uh, Windows uh, setup. So uh, let's say, for example, if you have to transfer data from an old version of SAS 9.4, right? Uh, for SAS 9.4 deployment, uh, uh, SAS Connect uh, is required in the environment in order to transfer the data to SAS via. So SAS Connect uh, uh, in, by default is not um, available in the uh, SAS via order. So you must, you must separately get the license um, enabled and um, get that. So uh, similar that that's what you see saw in the full deployment also, right? If you have to get the legacy data, you have to have that SAS Connect uh, enabled. So let's say, for example, if you have to have a SAS access interface to ODBC, right? Um, uh, SAS access interface to ODBC, um, uh, which includes SAS data connectors to ODBC and uh, and then to enable access to multiple data source that uh, that by means of a generic ODBC driver, so that is required, and PC files, um, uh, PC files also required to uh, uh, set up where you can um, uh, get the file format such as .jmp, .stata, .xls, etc. And then, uh, for example, if I take Postgres SQL, um, and uh, Postgres SQL, uh, uh, you have to also set up um, uh, PSQL uh, tool is required to set up, uh, and then you can get all those. Uh, uh, Postgres SQL data from the uh, uh, the data source data warehouse. So so these are the different uh, data source and storage requirements that are required to set up before the uh, uh, installation. So it doesn't. Uh, so here I'm not talking about uh, these uh, component setup. I'm talking about uh, let's say if you have to connect to the Hadoop, Hadoop will also give some software that you have to install and make it ready for your deployment to start. So similarly, JDBC, similarly, ODBC, similarly, Oracle. So all these components are should be, a third party component should be installed before so that you can, um, while doing the uh, SaaS, SaaS via platform deployment, you can easily um, get uh, the, the details attached to the deployment and then complete the deployment, right? Hope you are clear. Uh, so let me move on to the user. Uh, user and user groups uh, requirement. So, for any SaaS via platform or SaaS 9.x uh, platform deployment, you have to have uh, certain uh, users that are required to deploy the software and uh, certain certain groups that are required to use the platform and uh, certain, certain users to require to uh, uh, install or connect to the different source, different services in the uh, SaaS uh, via platform. So here, similarly, uh, we have to have these user accounts, CAS account, and any additional accounts that are required for um, a deployment to happen. So let's uh, start with that. So this, if I talk about setup, uh, the user account that deploy the software. So this user account that is used uh, for the configuration and starting the deployment process. Um, whereas you have to have that uh, that user's uh, full permission to the system, and uh, he he should be administrator in the in the in the Windows environment. If it is a Linux, he this this user should have a root access. So that um, the the installation uh, uh, the installation won't um, uh, hamper uh, with any of the permission issues while doing the uh, while doing the setup. Similarly, we also have to have a CAS account. Um, whereas this CAS account is critical for the deployment, 
as a member of the super user role um, uh, is a visual administrator interface that is SAS uh, environment manager. This SAS account is used for uh, logging into environment manager doing the unrestricted uh, uh, app access and privileges that are required to administer the uh, SAS environment manager. Uh, and then we also have to have some additional uh, users uh, such as uh, uh, HTTP account, uh, PostgreSQL if you are going to have SAS boot uh, that is required and uh, any other SAS studio that uh, that we are going to use that uh, that those additional users we have to set up to ensure uh, our, uh, our, our installation smoothly completes. Right. So we'll also talk about users and groups uh, separately while talking about the day to day activity day-to-day -day activities of SaaS uh, uh, via platform administrator. But uh, let, for now, let's move on to the next topics, uh, which is uh, uh, client which is client requirements. So in the client requirement, clients is nothing but uh, the, the Windows machine or the web browser that, uh, that um, uh, end users use to log into the uh, SaaS via platform. Uh, here, uh, minimum minimum hardware that uh, that is required for them to operate and then the operating systems or web browsers that they are going to use. Uh, if uh, they're going to use um, um, a mobile platform or a touch screen, touch screen support, uh, visual, the SaaS Vision Analytics app um, uh, run, on, run on the iOS, Android or Windows 10 operating uh, environments so they can use it and, uh, and then uh, uh, explore or view or explore the reports using the touch screen. And then uh, uh, there, there is also a requirement to use some database drivers, uh, which is required for um, each client to access uh, the SaaS software uh, that is required uh, to access the database directly. And the screen resolution uh, is also recommended for uh, SaaS via users is 1280 into 1024. So ensure uh, some minimum uh, screen resolution is uh, required for using these uh, uh, interfaces. So with this, uh, the system requirements, uh, uh, so these are all the system requirements that are required for uh, uh, um, uh, SaaS platform to uh, deploy. Next, uh, we'll talk about uh, uh, pre-installation pre tasks uh, in the next video.